Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. I am reading out of Psalm 143. Someone out there feels hopeless, and someone else feels depressed because of recent events. And the God that I serve, he doesn't want you staying in hopelessness or depression. This Psalm 143 is what I was reading. What I was reading in 2006. When there was some opposition that was put upon me and the enemy thought he had won. When there was some negative speech being said against me by some former in-laws. Ha, come on now. They thought that I was weak in Christ. They thought because I had backslid over the course of time that, oh, she don't know about the God I serve. And so they were speaking ill against me. And for every time I was having a setback, somebody was saying, uh-huh. <laughs> but what they didn't know was I was reading Psalm 143 and I'm putting some of you all on this because I don't want you to be in that place of hopelessness and depression because I sure didn't stay in it. I sure wasn't giving the enemy, okay, a foothold in my life. I sure wasn't letting those witnesses feel like they had the upper hand on me. Oh, no. So while they were running their mouths amongst each other and talking negative back in 2006, ha, Jesus, Jesus. You see, I talked to you all about 1996 and all the stuff I went through with an abusive partner and so forth. Now I'm going to take you into 2006 where I was dealing with some issues. The fact that number one, I was about to be delivering that year. Okay, my third child. The fact that some people were still whispering about some things that happened in the year prior. And for those that was wishing my downfall, but instead every curse was reversed. And then on top of that, I had some individuals that they were talking to me on the phone, right? Acting like they were my friend. When in all actuality, they were going back and they were talking about my pregnant self. You see, God was listening. God was listening. So 2006. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was some things I was grappling with. On top of that, I was gestational diabetic. Then I delivered my child had a postpartum. Folks were still running their mouths. Then I had to take a medicine for it. Folks were still talking. And accusing me of being crazy. I'm crazy, but I'm caring for the baby. I'm crazy because I want the baby to be, uh, you know, given certain things, uh, you know, time, affection, attention, what have you. Um, I'm delusional or upset or going through whatever. And folks wasn't even holding themselves accountable to some of the stuff that they had been a part of to set me back oh but you know nobody wants to be held accountable right they want us to just take all of the blame they want us to just be responsible right but you helped in the mess hmm. come on and during that time i didn't have a job either Right. So a lot of stuff was going on and there was a lot of folks that was talking negative and there was a lot of people whisper, whisper. But yet they was on the phone, though, taking up time, running uh, their mouths. And yet I had Psalm 143 in my pocket. Like I said, I'm going to put y'all on this because uh, you're not going to be down for long. Let's read. Oh, Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy and your faithfulness and righteousness come to my relief. He knows what they're saying. He knows what they're doing. And that's why some of you all, you must distance yourself. I don't care if they're smiling. I don't care if today they're in a good mood. I don't care if they sent you some money and I don't care if they sent you some gifts. 
in your faithfulness and righteousness come to my relief because you know what goes up is going to come down anyway you know that pretty soon that that smile is going to turn into a frown you know that those people they're not talking about you negatively today but tomorrow they just might because if you make one wrong move if you get a little bit weak if you go into a backsliding state they're going to talk about you oh they're going to have something to say but God he's going to come to your relief do not bring your servant into judgment. Come on, that's what I said. I said, do not bring your servant, me, Jesus. Don't bring me into judgment for no one living is righteous before you. See, they sat up there and they talked about me, but no one living is righteous before you. God heard that, you see. So what they said was at the bottom, God said, okay, daughter. You on that slow rise back up again. Verse three, the enemy pursues me, right? I had enemies from way back when looking me up on the internet, pursuing me over the internet. God said, oh, but you're not going to reach out to them. Remember Facebook, right? Mutual acquaintances and so forth. People want to know what you're doing, what you're saying and so forth. Okay. One while there, I'm reaching out to folks. I'm talking to folks on Facebook. I had over 800 and some odd friends. God told me, he said, you're going to reduce that number down to 90. Then eventually what happened was he told me, he said, now you are going to set, uh, uh, you're going to um, set your account so that, no, you're not going to be communicating with any of them. And then eventually I deleted my account. And then it was one of my sons that brought my account back to life again. It wasn't me. It was one of my sons. But I'll tell you what, though, why are they looking for you, right? Oh, you considered yourself to be a friend. I don't recall you being a friend. I recall you being a foe years ago. Then they want to come back around and you think that they've changed and they end up being that foe again. The enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground, right? Whether it's through words or for some of you all in abusive relationships. Okay. Crushes you to the ground. He makes me dwell in darkness. OK, some of you are going into your room, sitting in darkness, crying, don't want the lights on or anything else. Why? Because some some situation or some person sent you in the darkness. But the Lord says you're coming up out of that darkness right now in the name of Jesus. Do you believe it or do you don't or do you want to believe the lie? God tells me that you coming out of darkness. I don't have to know you. I don't have to know your name. I don't have to know where you live. I don't have to know anything about you, because if you're on this message, you already know. You already know you're here for encouragement. So I'm here to encourage you. And I'm here to tell you that you're coming out of that darkness. God, he, he, he said what? He said the enemy, he was pursuing me, right? Crushing me to the ground, whether verbally behind my back or to my face at that particular time. And making me dwell in darkness, right? Don't want nobody to see me. Don't want nobody to see me riding in the car or walking on the street. Don't want me going to this event or that one, okay? Didn't want me to pick up the phone and even talk to folks that was closest to me. But at least I had enough sense to do that much, right? Uh-huh. The enemy's day is coming for some of you all. I'm telling you, the enemy's day is coming. Been riding for too long. Been sitting up there and bad mouthing for too long. Got people thinking all sorts of negative things about me, telling lies, exaggerations and things like that. Some folks know the goodness. Some folks know whatever that enemy put out there. Right. Oh, yeah. 2006. Once again, interesting year. Some of you all you in this foolishness right now. But the Lord's saying you coming out of it. The enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in darkness like those long dead. Right. Some folks long dead gone as a result of some of these negative folks playing these little foolish mind games and so forth. Knowing that they're really foes, but pre pretending, guising themselves as, as friends, face Facebook friends and otherwise. They're not your friend. They're not your friend. So my spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismayed. I remember the days of long ago. All right. The Lord back in 2006 took me back through 1997 and 1999 because similar stuff was going on then. And I was pregnant with my first child back then in 1999. And yes, they was talking about me. You guys saved sanctified Holy Ghost field in 1997. Mm, then go and turn around, get pregnant out of wedlock in 1999. What kind of Christian are you? Mm -hmm, sitting up here talking about Jesus going out here with some older man. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of nerve, right? The same trap. That the enemy put me in in 1999, turned around, put me in that same trap in 2006. I was blindsided because I got hit up with some other stuff. 2005, a divorce. 
You see? When you backslide, you backslide into darkness. When you backslide into darkness, then you don't see the light. When you don't see the light, then you feel hopeless. You feel depressed. You feel like everything that people put upon you. You no good. You call yourself. You this, you that. Okay. I meditate on all your words. That's what I was doing. I'm telling you all, you meditate on God's word. What did he do? How did he save you out of the last situation? What type of sign, vision, wonder were you given? What is it that is, what is it that is, what is it that you're going to have to do in order to get up out of this situation right now? He didn't say stay in that dark place. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I'm thinking about it at that time. I'm trusting in the Lord. I'm looking at what he did. I remember when I went through something like this, but I remember my rep reputation came back up again. I remember that I was going well, and then the enemy cut in on my race. But then I remember there were some saints that came along, and they supported me, and they believed in me, even when nobody else believed in me, when other folks was, <laughs> when other, when other folks was bad-mouthing me. And meanwhile, they know what they were doing. They was just as guilty, if not worse, because they were the ones that was sitting up there reminding me of Jesus. They were the ones that was sitting up there telling me to go to church. They were the ones that was showing up with the Bibles and so forth. And you got a lot of nerve trying to disassociate, distance yourself as if you didn't sin. <laughs> right? 2006 was something else. I tell you, self-righteousness was on a rampage. Okay? I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. And that's what was going on. I'm like, Jesus, you see what they're saying? You see what they're doing? A couple years later, had to stand before all these individuals, right? Was going to family functions and so forth. Them same mouths that have been running. And I'm looking at these people and now you're grieving. And now you crying out to the Lord. No, we didn't go through the same thing, but I can see your weakness. I can see your weakness in the grief of a loved one. I can see your weakness in all of your negative talk about me as well as others. I can see your weakness. You don't look so strong, but yet you got a lot of nerve talking about me. You see what goes up comes down. Them self-righteous folks that like to talk about you. Oh, when their trouble comes, they look worse. Some of them, they age prematurely. A lot of them folks, they don't look, they don't look even as decent. As they did back then. Age is kicking them in the butt because of all their negative negative thoughts, negative ways, the things that they say and they do. A lot of them got sick. And some of them, they're not even here anymore. During 2006 when I was going through and they was running their mouths and saying some stuff, they six feet deep now. But... During that time, right, 2006, I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. I had my hands up and I was still going to the church, still visiting, still talking to the saints. I wasn't going to the church in the church pew. I was going to the church over the Internet, see. I had a covert operation going on. <laughs> Jesus, you see. Because you know judgmental folks. Got a lot of nerve going to the church. And she got that belly sticking out. And this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. I'm praising the Lord. You ain't got to see me praising the Lord. You ain't got to see me walking out the door. You don't have to hear about whether or not I went to the church. Verse 7. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me. At that particular time, when I was going through a lawsuit, I didn't even have representation in the court. I had to represent myself. I didn't have the money. Because I was going through that too. So I said, do not hide your face from me. Or I will be like those who go down to the pit. And did the, uh, did the court case work out in my favor? Initially, I didn't think so, but then the Lord showed me, he said, yes, it did, because you don't have as many burdens now, <laughs> right? So even though in my sin, the Lord, he uplifted those burdens. I didn't have to carry all that weight. Enemy sat up there, thought, mm-hmm, ha, 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 no, you got them burdens now. You listened to the wrong counselors, because if you had listened to the right counselors, you wouldn't have had to deal with all of the grief at that particular time, 2006. Come on. 
But see, they don't see, they don't hear, and they don't know, but God does. They they don't know, but God does. Answer me quickly, O Lord. My spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I will be like those who go down to the pit. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love. And it did, too, for I put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go. And that's what he did. He said the way that you should go isn't being wrapped up in this legal system. No, I know that you don't feel good. I know that you don't like the outcome, but you're not going back to court again. And I found that hard to believe because so many people always went back to court again about something, right? If they didn't win, they was going back to court. The Lord said, no, not you. So he showed me the way I should go through the paperwork, through the counselors, and through some, even the lawyer who sat up there and wasn't even my attorney, but he sat up there, gave me legal counsel and said, look, here's the end result if you want to take this through court again. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And it was confirmation of what God had already said. This is your this is your only court appearance. Show me the way I should go for to you. I lift up my soul. And at that time, that was it. That was my only court appearance. Rescue me from my enemies, O Lord. And I had enemies all around me because once the reality hit, like I really didn't win. No, you didn't. That I had enemies, see. Because once the enemy discovers that his plan, his strategy didn't work. And out of all of that, I ended up having all of these books, too. Out of all of that, I ended up having all of these blogs, too. I wouldn't have been able to do that had I had a job, The all the children, had been married again at that time, had, um, had a disconnected from certain people at that particular time, because I had to keep certain folks around. And the Lord used them. They didn't know they were being used by God, but they were. So sometimes God's going to allow you to keep certain people around for a season, even though you want to get rid of them, even though they're showing all signs that it's time to get rid of them. Uh-uh. He's going to use them for a season in your life. And so 2006 brought on a baby. 2009 brought refuge. 2011 brought awakening. 2013 brought the end. So when folks didn't realize that there was some cutting away, cutting off, it was already taking place. You see. So I said, rescue me from my enemies, O Lord. And that's what he was doing. Because he knew who my enemies were, even when I thought people were friends. Rescue me from my enemies, O Lord, for I hide myself in you. So I was going through that hiding where there was a period of time where there was no talking to anyone. Teach me to do your will. And so he was setting me up to do his will, which is his will today that you hear, that you see, that you witness across the Internet, that you have even possibly been a part of, listener, whether indirectly or directly. Because if people are in your lives sooner or later, you're going to talk about them folks, too, whether good, bad or otherwise. They're characters in your life. And it wouldn't be a story if you didn't mention the characters. Come on now. And so some of our testimonies include those characters. I got a testimony through the situations that I dealt with growing up. I got a testimony through the stuff that I went through in my young adult years. I got a testimony through the birth of my children, as well as dealing with the things that came with their fathers. I got a testimony when it comes to where God has me today and where he's taking me, I got a testimony. God's not through yet. Teach me to do your will for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on level ground. That's what somebody needs to catch hold of. You need to allow the Lord to teach you his will. Reading on verse 11 for your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life. OK, this is your life. This is your life and you want to stay in hopelessness and depression. God didn't call you to that type of life. Your life is better than that. And you need to look at your life as being better than that. That's why the enemy can get away with what he gets away with. Rather than looking at the good in people, looking at what God is doing. That is, you know, just Taking you to the next level. You want to look at all of what God isn't doing. And all of what God, you know, 
hadn't given you way back when and all that. Just stop it. For your name's sake, O oh Lord, preserve my life in your righteousness. Bring me out of trouble. That's who's going to bring you out of trouble. It's not just about what you see, feel, hear, taste, smell, but it is what God is going to do to bring you out, carnal minded. Stop thinking about your flesh and start thinking about your spirit. You are made up of not only mind and body, but spirit too. How long do I have to keep reminding these people of that, Jesus? Bring them up out of the trouble. It's trouble to be hopeless. It's trouble to be depressed. Because see, when I was hopeless and I was depressed and folks didn't recognize that that's what I was going through, I ended up making errors. They didn't know what was going on. They were ill-equipped. Had they been about God's business, they would have seen that I was a daughter that was falling down. That I was a daughter that was running toward all the wrong people, places, and things for love. That I was a daughter that was birthing out a child. And that was only but by the grace and mercy of God. It wasn't a curse. They thought it was. It wasn't. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies. Just ask the Lord to silence them because they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know what God's about to do in your hopelessness and your despair. They don't know. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies. Destroy all my foes. And I told you some of them people that was... Talking all of their negativity, being critical, judgmental, wearing two sides to their faces, right? They're not with us now. And some of them, they're going to their grave a lot faster because they refuse to see God in all of what's going on. They refuse. They just want to see, that's a woman. That's a woman I don't like. Or that's a man. That's a man I don't like. They're not seeing that God got that man. They're not seeing that God got that woman. And they get, they're they not seeing that they need to take their mouth off of that man and off that woman. And you may be that one. So what happens is when people are in the wrong, God going to silence them. But when they're not in the wrong, God going to keep them talking. Somebody better catch hold of that. When they're not in the wrong, God going to keep them talking. They're going to keep on prophesying. They're going to keep on giving out some dream interpretations. They're going to keep on laying on of hands. They're going to keep on walking like Jesus. Sometimes it's not the one that you point that finger at. Sometimes it's you. That's why I said that if you want to come up out of some things, you better start praising the Lord, confessing your sin and repenting and stop having your mind on everybody and everything and set your mind above, set your thing, set, set your heart, your mind, your spirit and everything else on Jesus. In your unfailing love, silence my enemies, destroy all my foes, for I'm your servant. The Lord said there's too many people that look so closely at my ministry to the point where they're not looking at theirs and what God is trying to do with them. There's so many people so busy worried about what am I saying, what am I doing, you see, rather than focusing on the one true God. So you can come up out of hopelessness and despair and obsession and frustration and bitterness and resentment if you just believe in the one true god so do that right now and you take time out to pray for yourself and also pray for your enemy i rebuke satan i rebuke everything that satan is standing for i rebuke satan's children of darkness I rebuke all of them that have come against me over the years, wishing for my downfall, wishing for my children's downfall, wishing for my relationships to be destroyed. And so I put all of them in God's hands. And that's what you should do. Thank you, as always, for listening. Please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube and Enterprise 7. Subscribe today. And we do welcome donations. Thank you and blessings to you.